Uh, I'm sorry. I'm going to the barber <laughs> shop tomorrow. <laughs> See what I put up with? <laughs> I need a haircut. I'm getting to be like the, <laughs> the old man hair puller. <laughs> yeah. Welcome back to the channel, guys. It's been a couple weeks since we ripped up the carpet in our living room and our den and discovered hardwood floors underneath. We've got a lot of questions from you guys of, you didn't put carpet back, did you? You're not you're gonna fix your floors, aren't you? A lot of questions coming in, so we wanted to do a quick update video for you guys today. Well, we did a slight update when we did the toy room, but there's been a yeah, lot of work right. since then, so we want to give you the next installment of updates, show you some of the progress. But first, I just asked him, can we eat first? Because <laughs> I'm hungry. So yeah. we'll show you what's for dinner. We'll eat, and then we'll... Would you want to take them all the way to the basement? Yeah, I'm going to show them in the basement because the the buckling of the flooring that was occurring, we figured out what was causing it. I want to share that with you guys in case you were curious. Yeah, and some of you might be dealing with similar issues mm -hmm. and it might be super helpful. Yep. So dinner tonight is going to be pretty simple. We have some smoked pork chops from our Tamworth pig that we raised this year. We have some leftover mashed potatoes from Thanksgiving. So we're just going to toss the pork chops probably on cast iron skillet, the leftover mashed potatoes we almost, we were like about this close to just tossing them to the chickens and we were like, why don't we save it and make something? Rachel said, well, I'll make like potato pancakes. So this is something called leftover seasoning that one of the times when we made broth earlier this year, we took all the vegetables that you normally strain out of broth, the carrots, the onions, the celery, all that stuff. And we freeze dried it and we turned it into a powder and it tastes kind of like leftover Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving. dinner for it some reason. Just like leftover. It's we'll put the some, best seasoning in the world. Yeah, it's good. We have some of Lindan's chive oil. This is basically garlic chives that you cook in oil. That should make it good. We'll put in a little bit of extra garlic. I don't think we put garlic in it. And one egg. And then we'll mix this up. I'm gonna dip them in some panko breadcrumbs and fry it up. I started buying this Vermont cultured butter recently because butter's been so expensive and this was actually cheaper than the Kerrygold we normally buy. It's really good. It may just switch permanently. I snuck a bite and it is the bachelor and the best he's ever made potato pancakes. The potato pancakes? Mm -hmm. Are they good? So good. And I forgot. Uh, I need to learn to give how to film cooking in the kitchen. We need to start our what's for dinner back up with you guys. Well, we've kind of done it, but just Little. one video here and there. Yeah. Mm. Mm hmm. And I have the very last of my cranberry relish to eat with my dinner and he's got beets. And <clears throat> I just got back for those that have been following from my doctor's appointment for my final checkup post-surgery. And he said, I'm healing great. Stitches still have a ways to go to dissolve. I guess they take like a full three months. But he said, I can resume like all physical activity within reason. He said, you know, just be reasonable. Yeah. So, great. Yeah. You're a model patient, he I'm said. I'm a model patient. That's, <laughs> little does he know what I did behind the scenes. <laughs> he doesn't watch our YouTube I channel. I did bust at you a bit. <laughs> All right. Do you see where my knife went? 
Nope. I don't know, I think I left it over there. Would you like me to get it for you? No, no, I was just trying to think if there was anything we else we wanted to update them on before we go down to the basement. Mm. I don't know. Mika, Mika got back, back from her final oh. checkup. No cone of shame anymore. Mm -hmm. Her stitches are all out. She yep. herself was a model patient. She was. She didn't have a choice with that no. cone on. No. <laughs> We tried following your guys' advice and bought one of those like bodysuit things to put on her. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work with Dash Hounds. Mm -hmm. She got out of that thing in like no time. Mm -hmm. I even got some of that um, athletic tape that Rachel uses in the garden for her squash spore be beetles. Yeah. And I like wrapped it around her chest and her stomach to like make the whole thing tight. She still got out, so. Yeah. Oh well. She does have to go back January third, I think, for one more x-ray just to make sure the stones aren't coming back already and that the diet is working to keep them from forming. So Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> Alright, we'll see you down in the basement when we get done eating. We talked in the video that we did about the little hidey hole that we made under our stairs about one of the things that we really wanted to focus on was shoring up this floor so it would stop deflecting and hopefully take some of the curvature out of the mm -hmm. room. So this is what they installed. This is an seven and a half inch LVL beam, two of them sandwiched together, 16 feet long. Goes from the side of the house all the way there, over there, all the way down here to where this chimney is. And right now it's supported temporarily with jack posts and three 20 ton jacks. They left last Wednesday was the la last Thursday. Uh, Wednesday, no Wednesday was the last day they worked. I've been coming down here every day, jacking them one or two more pumps to try to get the floor to go back without destroying the plaster in our house. We're already finding some cracks in a few places. It's going to happen. Yeah, so we're going to have just... to go back and repair some cracks yeah. down the road. Mm -hmm. I heard it happen the day that they were here <laughs> installing them. I came running downstairs. I'm like... What are they doing? Because yeah. <laughs> I heard like upstairs, and and you were up on the second floor. I was floor. on the second floor, and you didn't really hear it on the first floor, but right. I heard the popping on the second floor. Um, found one crack in the hallway up there, and then one crack in our living room wall. Um, smaller, uh -huh. but they're all patchable, and that's just. Things settle and they, things have been patched over 150 years right. and those patches are now going out of whack. And so. Yeah. One of the things that I did learn during this process is when they, with a two-story house like this, the way ours was built, a lot of times in modern construction, they will build the first floor and then they'll build the second floor. With this house, they built both floors at the same time. The two by fours, the two by fours that are on the first floor are like 20 some feet long. They go from the ground floor all the way up to the top of the second floor. Into the attic even. Into the attic. So yeah. when we're jacking this, we're basically jacking the entire two stories of our yes. house up when we do this. Yes. But we want to show you some of the other um, causes of the floor buckling right. that they found. Um, and this is where I think would be like super interesting for somebody to learn that's getting looking at buying an old home or maybe you're in an older home and you're wondering like yeah. do I have foundation issues is that normal Things or why like why is why is the edges of my floor all buckled and bowed like ours were yeah it was to the point where the the tongue and the grooves they weren't they were buckled so far the tongue wasn't even in the groove anymore but we know what was causing it now so let's show you that so most of the buckling that we had in our flooring was right here pretty much all along this entire wall the original basement walls the rocks that are mortared in kind of ends right here and everything that above this these bricks that was added on later during the construction process so if you go from right here this direction about eight inches that's where the rim joist is that's the entire outside perimeter band that all of these other joists connect to on the end so just having a rim joist and then empty space lets in a lot of cold air down into your basement. So what they used to do on these houses to remedy that was they would create an air gap between that rim joist 
and then they would take all the leftover brick, the broken brick, things like that, and they would construct a little miniature wall that went from where the basement wall ended up to the subfloor, which in our case is hardwood floor. So they would, they would brick all this up with a gap of two to three inches between the rim joist and the bricks, and that would act as a layer of insulation to keep the cold out in the winter. Over time, in our house, the rim joist, the other joist, everything started to settle. The wood settled, the brick didn't go anywhere. So the brick basically pushed the hardwood flooring, our subfloor, up to the point where it buckled. So what the guys that have been working on this for us have done is they came in here with a chisel and they removed the entire top layer of bricks from up here. So you can, all kinds of pieces. They, they basically almost filled half of our garbage can with all these bricks. That created a, a gap here now. These used to be pressing up against the subfloor, now they're not. And then what they were able to do is get all the boards pushed back down and then screw them into the joists with trim screws that are like countersunk down in. So it's working, it's fixing things well, um, but we also discovered some more issues along the way, which I'll show you next. So this is the section, more bricks. This is the section in my office, in my den, my study, where along the north wall of our house, it was buckled really, really bad. Probably the worst of the buckling almost. They started removing the top layer of brick. So this would sit up here like this, two, three layers. And once they removed it and they could see back behind there, they just kept going. So they removed almost all the brick down to the sill plate here because all of the joists from, from here back basically have termite damage, which there's no active termites in there now. These termites could have been here 100 years ago, you know, or 50 years ago. There's none here now, but these joists now need to be sistered up. So what they're going to do, they're going to sister from probably six feet back all along this joist to the sill plate and bolt to this to reinforce all of this. They're going to do that on this one, this one, and this one. They already have a piece cut for this one, but they have to redo it because now it has to go farther back. No so telling where that water damage came from though. The water damage? Yeah, yeah I don't know. So Rachel was just asking a question of how do we how do we know for sure that there's not more termite damage, to say back here under this section. So this joist all bricked in. How do we know there's not more damage behind there? And we don't, unless we excavated all of these bricks out and removed everything. We don't really know for sure, so. Yeah, I think it's just something that since we know it's there, it should we have indications of another problem it might be our first source to look right yeah yeah yep and there were some things along this north wall more to the east where some sill plates had been replaced at some point even part of the rim joist had been replaced so there have been people down here at some point doing work right we don't really know who if it was the previous owner or people before that but it's so, coming along good. Yeah, so if they're going to sister these three joists. Yep. And that's the last of the... They have to do something to finish that beam. What do they have to do to finish that beam off? With all the big LVL yeah, beam? with the jacks. They have, stuff. like, they ordered more proper jack posts, permanent jack posts. Oh, okay. That will go in place. And then that, part, that side is pretty much done. This is what's left, and then I need to have them check the place by the furnace in my office where there's wow. a really soft spot. Mm. I found where it is and I have an idea on how to fix it, but I wanna to talk to them and see what their ideas are because they, these people really think outside the box in a lot of ways. Yeah. So we're happy that it's getting fixed and fixed properly. And it, it has dramatically taken out the spring in the living room. Oh yeah. Uh, dramatically, um, like, all. Like before you would walk across our living room and our TV would go like this, it would shake. <laughs> yeah. um, and we just got used to it over the years, but now we're like, oh, 
the TV doesn't shake. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Even so, when the dogs would jump off the couch yeah. and hit the ground, the TV would wobble. Yeah, right. So that wobble is definitely greatly reduced. I yeah. won't say it's 100% gone, but it's dramatically different. Yep. So that's the big update. And still they're coming back this week to finish this job. Coming back on Wednesday. I don't know if they need more than Wednesday, but Wednesday to finish this up. The Wednesday after is floor finishing sanding guys. They're going to show up that day with their big sanding equipment and get the sanding. Yes, yeah, staining. Sanding, staining. They're doing new thresholds for us upstairs. Mm -hmm. So probably the next video, I would guess, would be the big reveal. Yeah, I'm going to try to film some B-roll while they're here doing yeah. that. Because I want to see I want to see what that sander looks like in comparison to... We watched some videos of other people refinishing them floors themselves. Mm -hmm. Whatever sander they're bringing runs on 220. They need yeah. to tie it right into our circuit breaker with clamps. So I'm curious to see what this thing actually looks like. Right. It's probably a beast. So yeah, we'll see you guys probably on the reveal video, like Rachel said, and yeah, it's been an adventure. I'm ready to have our house back to yes, normal. Yes, definitely. I, I need to put my Christmas tree up. I can't, <laughs> I can't yet until this is done. Yeah. All right. We'll see you guys later. Bye, guys.